Hey everyone, minasama konnichiwa, boku no chanra yokoso. Today I'm here to talk about The Bridge on the River Kwai from 1957 by David Lean. This is actually the first movie I'll talk about that I first saw at a youngish age, before I graduated from high school. In fact, I remember why I saw for the first time all the way back in middle school. I've unfortunately never been a big reader, but there were a couple points during school when I really tried. I read Pierre Boulle's Planet of the Apes, and having enjoyed that, I read The Bridge on the River Kwai, and really enjoyed that as well. Of course, my parents brought to my attention that it was made into a movie, which I was shocked to learn was famous and won Best Picture that year, so I naturally saw it as soon as I could. It was just as entertaining then as it is now. This was, of course, David Lean's first foray into the, quote, epic, a mode which he stayed in for the rest of his career. Although epic is a tiny bit misleading for this movie, I think, at least compared with his other movies. Sure, it's long and has a lot of extras in some scenes, but the relatively few locations and simple story help make this feel more small-scale than some of his other movies, which is cozy and entertaining. The story is simple, yet genius, I think. It's about British POWs in a Japanese POW camp during World War II who are tasked with building a bridge. After a giant dispute at first, which takes up a large chunk of the movie, the commanding officer, Colonel Nicholson, played by Alec Guinness, is able to take control of his men and ensure that the bridge is built properly. Meanwhile, an American soldier, played by William Holden, miraculously escapes the POW camp and ends up in a British colony, where he's tasked with going back to blow up the bridge. The genius part is that Nicholson is so wrapped up in making a great bridge for the sake of British pride that he forgets he's actually helping the enemy, so much so that he even tries to sabotage his own country's mission to blow up the bridge. It almost goes without saying that Alec Guinness is the heart and soul of this movie, giving what's probably his best performance. His subtlety is often, frankly, in stark contrast to William Holden's actorly showboating, especially when they're on the screen together. Nothing against Holden, but I think he does tend to slip into autopilot sometimes. Anyway, I love pretty much every scene Guinness is in, making a convincing, no-nonsense British officer, while always letting a sense his emotions bubbling underneath. For example, when he finally wins his long-fought battle with the Japanese colonel, his expression after basically going through hell is remarkable in its subtlety. In fact, he's so convincing that I think even after the story shifts focus to the team trying to blow up the bridge, we still root for him and for the bridge to go well. Speaking of the other half of the equation, when William Holden, in a bit of an improbable manner, manages to escape, his half of the movie plays out much like an adventure movie, which even though it's the less interesting part, still manages to grip. Strangely enough, when I think of the cinemascope frame of this movie, the first thing my mind goes to is a scene in the military office with a view of the enormous landscape surrounding it. I also think of this shot of Jack Hawkins playing the leader of the mission to blow up the bridge, leaning against a rock after his foot gets injured. But despite the excellent cinematography, this part of the movie is basically just typical war film material. Still good, but not the heart of the movie. Even though this section does have quite a bit of filler, including a couple of romantic subplots that don't pay off, the whole thing does help give the movie more of an epic feel, which is part of the appeal of movies like this. Of course, I have to mention Seshu Hayakawa, who plays Colonel Saito, the leader of the camp. He is always a magnetic presence to watch, and his English delivery is very effective and enjoyable to listen to. He is a forceful commander, while never veering into over-the-top territory. Despite the nature of the story, which basically centers around Japanese incompetence, Hayakawa brings a certain dignity to the role that I think prevents the movie from being racist. He makes for an excellent sparring partner with Alec Guinness, and they were both actually nominated for Oscars for their performances, but only Guinness won. As for my favorite moments, this isn't a moment in particular, but I love all the scenes between Guinness and Hayakawa. Not only is it interesting to see their different acting styles, but the dialogue is pretty much always really simple and straightforward, and I dig that style. It all pays off well in the dinner scene between the two, for example, where Saito tries to convince Nicholson to give in a little, but can't. Or, of course, the iconic scenes near the beginning where they first meet, where Nicholson confronts Saito about the Geneva Convention. I also very much enjoy the scene where Nicholson and his officers assess what's wrong with the bridge as it's being constructed, again with very straightforward dialogue. But most of all, I love the water, how we get a long take of the officers floating on a raft, and how we see most soldiers simply playing and relaxing. 
As far as POW camps go, you could probably do worse than this one by the looks of it. I also love Guinness's conversation with the doctor, who questions why they should build such a good bridge, and seeing how strongly he feels about the matter. My favorite piece of dialogue comes from this scene, where Guinness says, One day the war will be over. I hope that the people who use this bridge in years to come will remember how it was built and who built it. Not a gang of slaves, but soldiers, British soldiers clipped in, even in captivity. This dialogue also acknowledges the existence of civilians in this particular country, which I like that it does. You get the sense why this bridge is important symbolically, as represented by the sign put up after the bridge's completion. And of course, there's the final set piece, or should I say, right before the final set piece. I love when Nicholson sees the wire and goes down to investigate, and in this case, who the audience roots for may vary. It's probably most likely to be for Holden, Hawkins, and co., as they're who we've been spending most of our recent time with, but it could also very well be for Guinness to thwart the plan. I'm kind of in between them both, but in any case, I like seeing the two worlds collide. Oh yeah, and the bridge blowing up is cool too, although for my money, it's not the best scene of a bridge collapsing with a train on it in movie history. That would belong to, well, maybe that's for another time. But in the end, what I love about the bridge on the River Kwai is, more than any of the adventure and epic elements, pretty much boils down to Alec Guinness and his character's conviction that, for the sake of British pride, his soldiers should make the best possible bridge they can, even if it's to be used by the enemy in the war. That's a really fascinating philosophical question to me, and the movie makes it very entertaining. It's one of my 1,000 favorite movies. Thanks for watching my video. Have you seen The Bridge on the River Kwai? Please let me know what you think in the comments. I think of all my favorite movies as friends, and I think of my audience as friends too.